video, I wanted to show you guys the best way to go about choosing a good gaming, aka mechanical keyboard, that best fits your needs as well as your individual preferences. If you've been looking for a good mechanical keyboard, you know that they can be fairly expensive, with good ones starting right around 90 bucks, and many costing almost twice that for those that have RGB lighting, which can light up the keyboard and do all kind of other crazy lighting effects. Having used wireless membrane keyboards myself for pretty much the last 15 years, currently the Logitech K320, I started noticing how a lot of hardcore gamers and PC enthusiasts were using mechanical keyboards and touting their advantages over typical keyboards. So I set out to find a good one for myself to see if it would improve my gaming skills as well as my overall computing slash typing experience and wanted to share the process I went through of finding that perfect gaming keyboard. The first thing you'll want to do is assess your own needs by asking yourself a few questions. First question is, do you use the 10 key number pad at all on the right hand side of the keyboard? To me, I, I use it a lot because I work a lot in spreadsheets and I use the Windows calculator a lot to do a lot of quick calculations. But if you, know, if you don't have the need for it, definitely recommend looking at keyboards that are TKL, which just means 10 keyless. And the advantages of that is you get a, a smaller keyboard, it looks a little bit cleaner and takes up less footprint on your desk. And also you can move your mouse hand uh, a lot closer to your left hand if you like to game with your hands a little bit closer together. You know, I personally play with my left and right hands kind of squared with my shoulders and out towards the, uh, towards the edge of each side of the monitor. But bottom line, if you don't use the 10 key number pad at all, then look for a keyboard without it. Second, along with the aesthetic considerations, do you want or need keyboards with extras like media controls, dedicated macro keys, a wrist pad, and or USB ports? A lot of keyboards give you quick access buttons for media controls on your keyboard. But it's important to notice if they have actual dedicated controls rather than use a shared function key. Shared function keys are annoying because they aren't quick to use, they aren't as quick to use as dedicated keys, since you have to press a modifier key first. Media keys are really convenient if you listen to a lot of music or watch a lot of movies on your computer because you're able to quickly play and pause your media and quickly mute or adjust the volume as well without having to fumble around with the mouse. As far as dedicated macro keys, this will really come down to the types of games you play. Most keyboards have their dedicated macro keys down the left hand side of the keyboard, generally increasing the size of the keyboard. A keyboard like the Corsair K95 has a whopping 18 dedicated macro keys, while most of the Razer Black Widow keyboards just have a single column of 5. If you mostly play FPS games like me, then macro keys shouldn't really be a necessity or an issue. You should also consider the aesthetics of the keyboard. While not as important for some people, you should like how the keyboard looks and in general how it's laid out. Things like the different types of fonts used on the keys and the general shape of the keyboard itself can be important. For example, the Logitech G910 uses some uniquely shaped keys that you may or may not like. Third, do you want an RGB enabled keyboard that has lighting effects? If you want the ability to have your keyboard do all the fancy lighting effects that you see online, you're going to have to pay more for that feature, typically around 50 or 60 bucks at least. A lot of gamers like the RGB functionality, but I personally find it very distracting. Although I must admit, there are some really cool lighting effects that you're able to do with them. Also, if you have a lot of other lighting in or around your desk or computer setup, this is a good way to coordinate all your peripherals together and have them all lit up and synced, making your desk slash gaming environment look a lot more fun and kind of cool. Finally, and probably most importantly, what kind of key switch best suits you? You'll need to decide what type of mechanical key switch feels right to your fingers. First, let's talk about the Cherry MX switches. These are by far the most popular key switches used by a number of different keyboard manufacturers. Now there are primarily six types of Cherry MX switches, all coded by color. You have green, blue, white, brown, red, and black. The best thing to do when deciding between different Cherry MX switches is to try them out all for yourself and decide which you like best. You can do this by picking yourself up one of these testers which have all the different types of key switches on it so you can compare them and decide which one is for you as this is a highly subjective and personal choice. So here's a close-up of the key tester right here, and these are all Cherry MX switches, all the uh, range of colors, well, the ma major ones anyway that people use. And you can see all the keys are removable, so I'm just gonna start with the first two colors that I mentioned. So the first two switches I wanna show you are the uh, most tactile feedback ones, they're kinda known as the click clicky switches. This is the Cherry MX Blue and the Cherry MX Green. Now the difference between the two is they both click when you press them, but the green uh, requires a little bit more force from your fingers, so 
if you have bigger hands or bigger fingers, you might like a little bit, um, you might prefer a key that takes a little bit more force to push down. Now, they also operate a little bit differently than the other keys, as when you press it down, you see it meets the spring point and then it clicks past that point. So there's a press, it doesn't actuate yet, and then when you click it, it actuates and then it bottoms out and you can let it back up again. Now the reason why I didn't really prefer these for gaming, I don't think they're ideal, they're more ideal for touch typists, is because the, the reset point after you press the button is a little a lot further up than the actuation point. So you can never really, like when you're running around or strafing, it's a little difficult to get a good feel. It's a little, They're just slower because you have to let it the key up back up a lot further before you can press it again for the second time. So it's good for um, typing, like I said, because you can get used to right where the click is. You know, usually when you're running around in first person shooters, at least for me, you're press, you're, you're holding down to run and then you want to kind of quickly strafe or something like that and go back and forth. Anyways, they just seem a little bit slower to me and it's hard to kind of, I found it pretty hard to consistently control um, in my opinion. So I kind of ruled these out, but these are really, but these are really uh, the preferred keys for typists. They're also extremely loud, so if you do a lot of typing and you have other people next to you, they can become extremely annoying. Or if you do a lot of uh, streaming as well, and your microphone will pick up a lot of you, a lot of the clicks and the clacks, so that's kind of annoying for any of your viewers or, or listeners. So next up are the uh, Cherry MX Red and the Cherry MX Black. Now these are both linear, non-tactile switches. Well, all that means is when you press it, it's just a smooth linear feel all the way down till it bottoms up, till it bottoms out, and then when you let it go, it's just a smooth linear spring back up. Same thing with the black. The difference between these two is the black takes a little bit more force uh, to depress. So if you, again, if you have bigger or stronger fingers, uh, you might prefer black. And um, anyways, the Cherry MX Red is by far the most preferred um, Cherry MX switch by gamers. It's, it's easily the most popular. And you can see it's kind of nice because you can press it really fast, and it just bounces back into place. Same with the black, but again, it just takes more force. Um, to me, I did like the feel of the reds, although I felt like the travel distance was too far. So in other words, all Cherry MX switches have four millimeters of travel distance there, and these actuate right at the midway point at two millimeters. But because there's no feedback, there's no feedback, you don't really know exactly when you're pressing it or not. So typists complain that they don't really know when they hit it, or sometimes they accidentally hit it twice, or they think they hit it and they don't, because they didn't press it uh, down far enough. And people also complain if you kind of tend to rest your fingers on the keyboard like that, you might accidentally have some accidental presses because it's so, it's just a linear and you don't really know when it's actuating. Well, I did like the feel of these reds. I thought it was a lot better once I put the um, O-ring mod on it because then the travel distance is a lot less. So you could get it close, the full travel distance, you could get it when you add an O-ring and I'll show you that, uh, the O-rings in just a second. But it would actuate basically at the point it bottoms out and it dampens the feeling of when you press the the key to the bottom so it gave it a nicer feel in my opinion so I did definitely like the red I thought that was one of the contenders for me black is too hard to press in my opinion it would probably cause some hand strain but I definitely chose um, red as one of the keys that I, I preferred here's one of the rings here it's just a small rubber ring you have them in the blue which are about that thick I don't know that's probably a millimeter and a half I would say and then you have the red one which is uh, ever so slightly thinner, if you can notice it there. Maybe a millimeter or so. I'm not sure exactly the distances, but anyway, all you do to do that, or to put these in, is you pull the keycap off whatever keyboard you have, and you can see, but you just kind of throw it on there, wrap it around the inside of the ring. But you can push it down, usually if you're supposed to use the key puller tool but anyways I just kind of put it like that and then you can get it on there and you can see it underneath there so it just limits how far down you can press it and then now you almost basically are giving the red um, a tactile feedback so now as soon as you press it you can feel it bottom out and you know you press it and then you get the quick um, return press so yeah this really felt good to me and I was gonna try out definitely try out some uh, keyboards with the cherry red And finally here we have the last two switches, which is the uh, MX white and then the brown switch on, on the right here. And these are kind of like a hybrid between the red and blacks and the clicky uh, green and blues. Because it, while they don't give you a full clicky uh, tactile feedback, they, there's a slight kind of bump. You can kind of feel see it there, hear it. 
and that kind of and that basically lets you know when you um, press the key down. Now, to me, these were these are definitely the most similar feeling to regular membrane or rubber dome keyboards. So, kind of what I've been used to typing on forever and playing on. And um, I really like the way the browns feels. Now, obviously, the difference between these two again is the white one is the one they're the same, but it's just the white one's the one that's a little bit harder to depress. So. But yeah, I really like the way the browns felt because, like I said, it's what I'm more used to feeling. And um, you get a, obviously going for, with a Cherry MX switch, these browns are going to give a lot more consistent feel and consistent key presses than any a membrane keyboard I've been using, especially the ones I've been using for years. I'm sure they're, um, my keys are worn down pretty far. So I'm going to try out the reds and the browns because those were my two favorite um, switches I'm gonna try for gaming I felt like these were the best especially this because it's a nice balance a compromise between the linear feel and giving you also um, a little bit of feedback in the in the press so I'm gonna try a few keyboards with the red and, and brown see which one works out best for me and give you my opinion on that so I hope that gives you a pretty good feel uh, for how each of these switches differ getting a hold of a switch tester like the one I have here is really helpful in deciding which key kind of key switch you like best but to me, it came down to either the red or the brown switch. There are, of course, other types of switches on the market, either copies of the Cherry MX brands, like the Kiel switches used on Razer keyboards, or completely proprietary switches, like the Romer G switch, found on the Logitech G10. There are also the Topre brand switches, which is a kind of capacitive switch with a spring rubber dome combo, and are more suited for typists, in my opinion. One final consideration is that if you want to add any kind of customized shaped keycaps to your gaming keyboard, you can do that with any keyboard that uses the Cherry MX type switches, including Razer keyboards, since they basically use the same key form factor. So if you're planning on modding your keyboards at all, just keep that in mind. In my next video, I do a keyboard shootout of the most popular mechanical gaming keyboards on the market, including the Corsair K70, the Corsair Strafe, and pit them against the best offerings from Razer and Logitech, including the Razer Black Widow and the Logitech G10, as well as give my personal recommendation. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys. Please give a thumbs up if you have a quick second, and otherwise you all take care.